Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I'm Harsham Ali Khan. So this is the last and final theory video on financial statements. From the next video onwards, we'll start the problems on financial statements. Remember, the preparation of financial statements depend on the knowledge of uh, the theory regarding how to make the financial statements. Without understanding the theory, we cannot be able to understand the problems. So theory is very, very important. Don't underestimate. Don't ignore the theory videos. So if you are perfect on all the procedures, concepts, everything, then it will be easier for you to do the problems on financial statements. So this is the last and final theory video in which I'm going to explain you about few more adjustments. Five adjustments already have discussed, explained you completely in the previous video. If you have not watched those videos, I suggest you go to the playlist of my channel. Select the subject accounting for management. Select the videos of unit number two, preparation of financial statements. Watch those videos, be perfect on how to make the adjustments. Then only we can proceed. So before going ahead, take the screenshot of the points which I have written on the board. Then I'll explain all the adjustments. First, the first adjustment is depreciation. In, uh, in the order of uh, the adjustments, this is the sixth adjustment because five adjustments are already completed in the last video. The sixth adjustment is regarding depreciation. So often in every problem, you'll come across depreciation as an item of adjustment. So how to adjust the depreciation? First, you must know the entry. The entry for depreciation is depreciation account debit, fixed asset account credit. So this is one of the method, old method of providing depreciation. The new method is depreciation account debit, provision for depreciation account credit. But that is a new method. But I'm explaining you the old method, depreciation account debit, fixed asset account credit. What is the effect of this? The depreciation should be debited to profit and loss account. And the same amount of depreciation will be deducted from the fixed assets on the asset side of the balance sheet. That's it. This is the adjustment regarding depreciation. Seventh adjustment is regarding bad debts. Bad debts means irrecoverable debts. The amount which cannot be recovered from the credit customers. The business has sold goods on credit to many customers, but some of the customers may not pay the amount. It is a loss to the business. That is called bad debts. So what is the effect? What is the entry for bad debts? First of all, bad debts account debit, sundry debtors account credit. <coughs> so bad debts debited, sundry debtors account credited. What is the effect? The bad debts should be taken on the debit side of profit and loss account. And in the balance sheet, the bad debts should be deducted from sundry debtors on the asset side of the balance sheet. That's it. Now, the next adjustment is regarding provision for doubtful debts. Apart from bad, uh, bad debts, a business organization will make some provision for bad debts. In new terminology, it will be called allowance for irrecoverable debt. So whatever be the name, whether we call it as provision for bad debts or allowance for irrecoverable debts means same. So as a prudent policy, as a prudence policy, every business has to make some provision for doubtful debts. Actually, it is not an actual bad debt, but expected bad debts. The business organization has to find out how much amount we cannot be able to recover from the credit customer on an estimated basis. So, as a conservative policy, the business has to provide provision for doubtful debts. The entry for provision for doubtful debts is profit and loss account debit, provision for doubtful debts account credit. What is the effect for this? The provision for doubtful debts will be debited to profit and loss account. In profit and loss account debit side, you take provision for doubtful debts and this provision for doubtful debts will be deducted from sundry debtors on the asset side of the balance sheet. That's it. The next adjustment is regarding interest on capital. 
in some of the problems you will find this item in adjustments provide interest on capital at 10% like that so first you calculate 10% of the capital you will get interest on capital what is the entry for interest on capital interest on capital account debit capital account credit interest on capital will be debited capital account will be created now what is the effect of this entry the interest on capital will be taken on the debit side of profit and loss account first effect second effect is this interest on capital will be added to capital interest on capital will be added to capital on the liability side of the balance sheet that's it next comes when goods are withdrawn by the owner for personal use sometimes you will get this adjustment also in the adjustments goods are taken by the owner for personal use it is called drawings then what is the entry for these drawings entry will be drawings account debit purchases account credit remember this is very important drawings account debit purchases account credit this is the entry when goods are withdrawn for personal use what is the effect <coughs> the goods withdrawn for personal use will be deducted from purchases in the trading account secondly these goods taken for personal use will be added to other drawings and the total drawings will be deducted from capital on the liability side of the balance sheet that's all next adjustment is interest on drawings in some problems this adjustment is given there is a provision for interest on drawings at the rate of 5% so first of all you calculate 5% on drawings you will get the amount of interest on drawings so what is the entry for interest on drawings the entry will be capital account debit interest on drawings account credit capital will be debited interest on drawings will be created what is the effect of this entry interest on drawing is an income to the business that's why it will be taken on the credit side of the profit and loss account so interest on drawings credit side of profit and loss account then again this interest on drawing will be added to capital on the liability side of the balance sheet that's it this is the effect of interest on drawings next is goods distributed as free samples one another adjustment which frequently be asked in problems goods distributed as free samples sometimes a business will distribute the goods to the customers as free samples why this free goods are given to advertise to make publicity to promote the product so sometimes these goods are freely given so what is the entry when goods are freely distributed the entry will be advertisement account debit purchases account credit remember very important always i suggest you to keep a notebook calculator pen beside you while watching the video immediately you should write it down so advertisement account debit purchases account credit this is the entry what is the effect of this entry the goods which are freely distributed that will be deducted from purchases in trading account deduct from purchases in trading account and these goods which are freely distributed will be taken as advertisement expenses which is debited to profit and loss account the advertisement expenses will be debited to profit and loss account that's it deduct from purchases in trading account add to advertisement expenses on the debit side of profit and loss account. that's it next is goods destroyed by fire this is the last adjustment i'm going to explain after this we'll start the problems goods destroyed by fire something sometimes fire will occur in the go down the goods were destroyed now in this case three situations may arise the three situations are case one if the goods are fully insured the company the business has taken an insurance policy on the goods 
and the insurance company has agreed to fully compensate for the amount of loss. Example, if the business incurred a loss of 10,000 rupees and the insurance company agreed, accepted the claim that we will pay you 10,000, there is no loss at all. The goods are destroyed and the insurance company has agreed to pay the full amount. It is called fully insured. In that case, what is the entry? Insurance company account debit, trading account credit. So while making trading account credit side, you write on goods destroyed by fire 10,000. Goods destroyed by fire 10,000 on the credit side of trading account. And on the asset side of the balance sheet, you write on amount due from insurance company. Amount due from insurance company asset side of the balance sheet. Trading account credit side and asset side of the balance sheet. If the goods are 100% fully insured. Second case is when the goods are partially insured, not fully insured, partially. For example, 10,000 rupees worth of goods are destroyed. Out of which the insurance company says we will give you, will accept the claim up to 8,000. We cannot give 10,000. Because as per the policy terms, you are eligible to get only 8,000. So the business lost 10,000 worth of goods, but the insurance company has agreed to pay only 8,000. Remaining 2,000 is the net loss to the business. Then what is the entry? Entry will be insurance company account debit 8,000. Example, profit and loss account debit 2,000. Example, trading account credit 10,000. The total gross loss will be credited to trading account and the net loss of 2,000 will be debited to profit and loss account and 8,000 which is receivable from the insurance company will be taken on the asset side of the balance sheet. This will happen if the goods are partly destroyed or partially destroyed by fire. Next comes when the stock is not at all insured. It is not compulsory to make the insurance. There are some business houses we do, which do not take the insurance policy uninsured. In that case, the gross loss is the total loss because no insurance company will give the money. It is not insured, right? So the entry will be profit and loss account debit trading account credit. The gross loss, complete loss. Example, 10,000 rupees worth of goods were destroyed completely. No insurance policy is there. So total loss is 10,000. Net loss is also 10,000. The entry will be profit and loss account debit trading account credit for complete 10,000. No insurance company. So here profit and loss account debit trading account credit. So what is the effect? In trading account credit side, loss by fire 10,000 example in profit and loss account debit side loss by fire 10,000 that's all no insurance company no asset side that's it so these are the few adjustments I have explained in this last video on this theory of financial statements inshallah we'll continue the problems on these financial statements in the next video so if you're satisfied give a like to the video then uh, give your comment, subscribe my channel if you have not yet subscribed and share this link of this channel to your friends, to your group so that more students can watch the video and enhance the knowledge. Purchase the super thanks which is given below my video. Inshallah, we'll start the problem in the next video.